ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin. This is my co-host, Teddy. If I look a bit hot, guys, it's because I've shot this video three times already. Uh, and I can't run my air conditioner while I'm shooting. Uh, so it's about 30 degrees in here right now, 30 degrees Celsius, and uh, I get a bit hot. The reason for that is that uh, I keep finding new information and I keep wanting to put it all in the video and I'd rather just reshoot the whole thing so I can sort of add it all together and anyway let's get into it we got a lot to get through uh, because AMD had the E3 presentation uh, today and uh, they had a lot of news uh, for us so let's get into it so if you do not know the Ryzen 3000 lineup Zen 2 uh, this is what it looks like it's a solid lineup there uh, if you do not know the specs, I assume most of you guys do, so we can jump into it. Sandy so uh, showed the 3900X beating the 9920X in a single-threaded performance by 14% and 6% uh, in a multi-threaded, which is really good there. You know, that's a $1,200 Intel CPU against a $500 AMD CPU, uh, so that's really solid. Uh, the 3900X also beat the 9900K in some of the tests there, some of the games. Uh, pretty much matching it though in performance of both 1080p and 1440p. They did show though that uh, for streamers, the 3900X is by far the better choice compared to the 9900K, so all those streamers out there would definitely like that. Now the uh, 3800X there also uh, did a decent job, uh, but the 9700K uh, did maybe a little bit better than the 9900K against it. Uh, coming out a little bit more on top, but uh, certainly the 3800X, like the 3900X, will be far superior in our productivity stuff versus their Intel counterparts. Now the 3700X finished a Cinebench render much faster than the 9700K, and also it consumed 20 watts less. That's really impressive there. The AMD's doing very well in performance per watt. This has been something we've been wanting to see from them for quite some time. I had some more news about the uh, Ryzen 5s. So the uh, 3600X, 6 cores, 12 threads, as you would expect, 3.8 on the base, 4.4 on the boost, 95 watt TDP, coming in at 250 bucks. And the 3600 there, once again, 6 cores, 12 threads, uh, 200 megahertz less on the clock speeds, down to 3.6 and 4.2, still decent though. Uh, 65 watt TDP and coming in at 200 bucks. If you do not know cooler wise, the Ryzen lineup, the uh, 7s and the 9s will all come with the Wraith Prism cooler, which is a really, really solid stock cooler there. And if you're not interested in overclocking, then you'll be able to just run that stock cooler. It looks nice in the rig as well. Um, so that'll be a, a good cooler, a very good box cooler that they're coming with, which also makes some sort of decent value for money or better value for money than the Intel equivalents. Now, the 3600X again seems to be matching the 9600K in gaming at 1080p, which is solid. These are AMD's benchmarks, though. These aren't, you know, ones done by us or anything. So they're going to obviously show their uh, CPUs in the best light possible. And uh, they finally announced the Ryzen 9 3950X. So a lot of people like me and other tech reviewers already knew about this. We'd been hearing so much around the industry from it. There was only so much we could tell you guys without getting in trouble. Uh, so yeah, 16 cores, 32 threads, as you would have been hearing. 3.5 gigahertz on the base and 4.7 on the boost. 72 megabyte cache. That's a bit uh, slightly better than the uh, slightly bigger than the uh, 3900X. 105 watt TDP and coming in at 7, 750 US dollars. In my video yesterday, I predicted the price would be 799, so I was only off by a little bit. Uh, that's that's fine. That's a really good price there. It certainly undercuts the uh, Intel equivalent, which is about sixteen hundred dollars. So, <laughs> yeah, good job there, AMD. I actually think they could have charged a bit more for it, but uh, you know, it's not like where we're going to complain that the CPU is like too cheap or something like that. But in terms of AMD uh, making more profit, it could have been something they could have done, uh, but they chose not to. Now, Microsoft announced that they've uh, made some improvements to Windows Ten, which will allow for a better Ryzen performance. So that's really good. Uh, the security issues that have been plaguing Intel seem to mostly unaffect the uh, Ryzen CPUs, the, the new ones as well. So that's going to be good, and, and that's going to be a reason I think quite a few Intel users switch over to AMD. Pricing-wise, just looking at the lineup, it seems like AMD is just matching Intel, but of course they're going to be better value in terms of you just get more for your money, even though they're at the same price point. Uh, so that's certainly what AMD is going for, and I do think in terms of the market share, AMD's market share in the CPU space anyway will a uh, desktop CPU space will continue to grow 
Uh, and I think with Ryzen 3000, it will grow at an even more rapid rate than it had previously done. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to checking these out. And one last thing on the CPU side of things was a memory that AMD showed. Uh, DDR4 up to 5100 megahertz. Wow. So I don't know how many people in the real world would run memory that fast. Um, I suppose it's how much do you want to spend. That was on air as well. But I think most, uh, even most of the enthusiasts will be just looking at things like... Um, like 4400 megahertz something like that they'd be really solid these ryzen cpus really do benefit from fast memory so it's not just a waste of money uh this is really good to see so it'll be interesting um uh, it'll be interesting to me to see sort of what memory a lot of people sort of go to is like the average memory speed that ryzen 3000 users uh use and it's also going to depend on which motherboard you go for now let's talk about the gpus then so the 7 nanometer RX 5700 XT has 2,560 stream processors, 40 CUs, 8 gigs of GDDR, GDDR6 memory at 14,000 megahertz on a 256-bit bus. So memory-wise, that's the same as the RTX 2070 and the 2080. And clock speeds-wise, coming in at 1,605 base, 1,755 gaming, and 1,905 boost. Uh, and price-wise, coming in at 449 US dollars, which is actually uh, 50 bucks less than the MSRP on a RTX 2070. As far as those clock speeds go, in my previous video, I talked about it. I wasn't a bit sure how it's going to work. So apparently, the gaming speed is actually a bit conservative. And uh, what you will mostly see is a speed between the gaming and the boost speed. So with the uh, 5700 XT, you would imagine it would be something like... Um, uh, in the 1800s, I would imagine it will sort of just hover around there. Now, as far as the uh, cooler goes, it's coming with uh, more standard AMD reference design, aluminium shroud though, and an aluminium backplate. That's nice. They have redesigned it, so they say it's better in that aspect. Seven phase digital power design, a graphite thermal interface material, and noise output will be limited to 42 dBs. Uh, that's better than. The hair dryers that we got in the old days were like the 7970 reference model and the R9 290 and 290X reference model. So certainly AMD are not looking to do a repeat of that, it seems, uh, which is good. Uh, Performance-wise, in uh, World War Z at 1440p, the 2070 got 102 FPS and uh, the 5700 XT scored uh, 117. So that's a good result there. And across the board, at 1440p, it looks like the 5700 XT was beating the 2070 by about 5 or 6%. Now the RX 5700 is basically a trimmed down version, 2,304 stream processors, 36 CUs, but the memory is exactly the same. Clock speeds are a bit lower, 1465 base, 1625 gaming, 70, 1725 boost max, and it's coming in at $380. In Apex Legends at 1440p maxed out, uh, it showed 88 FPS compared to the 72 of the RTX 2060, and you see at 1440p across the board wins there for the 5700 by about 10% compared to the RTX 2060, which is very impressive. AMD also announced Fidelity FX, which looks quite good. It's kind of like DLSS, sharpens things up, uh, but no performance hits, so no one's gonna complain about it. They also have AMD Image, uh, AMD Radeon Image Sharpening, which is similar, but for games that don't support F Fidelity FX. Uh, Radeon Anti-Lag reduces the input lag by about 31%. That's mainly gonna be for the eSports crowd, just looking for another slight advantage there that also works with Intel CPUs. They uh, announced and showed a 50th anniversary RX 5700 XT, which is gold on it, and higher clock speeds by about 75 megahertz, coming in at 50 bucks more for 499. So that's going to be good for enthusiasts out there that want something a bit different. And all these CPUs and GPUs are going to be available in less than a month on July 7th, aside from the 3950X, and that's going to be coming out in September. So that's all the news. I want to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comment section down below. I know it's a lot to take in, but I really want to know what you guys think. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, then definitely do that and like the video. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.